Hey everybody and welcome back to another Kraken Packs video. I am your host, Biz Rivers. That's right, we're back with the final guild. Everyone's always been waiting for this one. Azorius, right? That's the one you've been waiting for? It's the, obviously the best guild? No, I mean, I Orzov was my my personal favorite. So, I mean, like, these guys are like a close uh, second to Orzov, I guess. But, like, I mean, I think in order for me, it would be Orzov and then Selesnya. Personally. And then maybe, like, Golgari. I think that's that's the order that I would do things in, personally. So, we of course have an, Orz, uh, an Azorius die that actually looks good. Like, this actually looks nice. It's white with blue lettering, and the symbol fills up the top of this, like, super nicely. Like, it, it fills up almost that entire face, which is super cool. I'm super glad that they didn't, like, make it tiny like the others. I understand that the other ones are a lot harder to make it fit, like, into that triangle, but because this is already, a, like, their symbol is a triangle, they just made it, they were like, well, let's make it, like, the whole face. It's super cool. It looks really good. Like, the die looks really good compared to the others. All right. Now, we've got, of course, our token card, which has a sweet draft on the back of it for MTG Arena. If you want a chance at winning one of those codes... Make sure you tune in uh, Mondays for my uh, MTG Arena streams on twitch.tv slash MrBevers. So, we're going to do a build. We've got five packs. we got our promo card. And we got our little divider. And we got our, our thing here. But my I still have a bit of a, a cough and a catch in my throat. So, I'm probably not going to read this out loud. I apologize. It's just... I'm going to end up coughing away if I try to read it all. So, we got five packs. Let's get in and see what we find. So, we'll put our... Pro that's our promo pack up there. And we'll move the die off. Let's, let's leave it in shot a little bit so you guys can still see it. And we'll do what we always do, which is we'll lay out our cards properly and see what we can find. Now, we want to try and build Azorius, right? Because we know that this pack is seeded with Azorius cards. So, let's see what we've got. Okay. Ooh. A Tesa with a Grawl Guildgate and a Beast token. Alright, alright. I mean, like, going Esper is definitely not a hard thing to do in this type of format. That's for sure. So far, we're a little lacking on white cards, but that's okay. Ooh, that's nice. Law Mage's Binding is a good pickup. Chillbringer, also very good. We got a Sphinx. And we hit a Godless Shrine. Okay. We're putting our rares here. And, okay, Simic Guildgate and a Human Token. Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> Petitioners. We're not doing the Petitioner's deck. It's just not happening. Ooh, Oil Arc. Or Oligarch, or whatever you want to call it. Ooh, a second Law Mage's Bindings. And an Ill-Gotten Gains. And a... De okay, Depose and Deploy. Nice. Tower Defense. Okay. And our rare is a Bedeck and Bedevil. With an Orzhov Guildgate. So, okay. Alright, let's see here. Skewer, very nice. Okay, we need that, so that's good. I don't think we're playing green. Our green looks a little lackluster. <whistles> Alright, that's a that is a card. The Hellkite is a card. Mm, it's gonna be hard not to not to wanna play that that, that Hellkite. I don't think we're playing green. That's our first Simic card. <laughs> I don't believe that we're going to be playing Simic, that's for sure. Okay, Rhythm of the Wild is a very good... Another Gate Colossus? Alright. And we got a Biomancer's Familiar, which is 
really not great since we don't really have a lot of adapt creatures. We did get a foil though, and it's but it's a foil it's a, uh, volley, which is not amazing, and an ooze token. All right, what's our promo? Ooh, Deputy of Detention. That's a very good card for Azorius. I think our white is a little lackluster, to be completely honest. So I don't think we're going to be playing Azorius, but we'll see. We'll see what this pack has to say. Look at this. It's all blue. Summary Judgment. Oof. No. All right. Okay, so we're definitely not playing green. Like, it's definitely not happening, because I think our green is like... I think we have three copies of Volley. Is that right? <laughs> we have three copies of Volley, which is not necessarily a bad thing if you come up against the right kind of deck, but it's definitely not worth... Like, you're not going to run three. You might run one. I don't think you run three. Um, Caretaker is kind of, like, mediocre. Um, Silhana Wayfinder is mediocre as well. Root Snare is mediocre. Soraform Hybrid is good. Tower Defense is mediocre, uh, Sylvan Brush Strider is mediocre, and Steeple Creeper is good. So, like, we have, like, I would say we have, like, I mean, we played a foil if we're going to play any, right? I would say we have one, two, three, three for sure playables, and then two others that are, like, sideboard fringe cards if you need them to fill out the green. And I, that's unfortunate because, like, the Rhythm of the Wild is very good. And the Sunder Shaman is very good. Right? But in our red, too, like, we have... I don't think we have any Riot creatures in red. I didn't see any. So let's let's just take a quick peek. Tin Street Dodger is fine. Goblin Gathering is okay if you have the right deck for it. Scorch, Scorch Mark is fine. Skewer is good. Gore Clan Wrecker is fine. That's a Riot creature. Okay, we also have a Clamor Shaman, which is another Riot creature. Okay, Act of Treason is fine, but not amazing. Well, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Flames of the Raised Boar is fine as well. Um, it's actually not a bad little removal spell, especially if you have something that has four or more power, because um, you can just murder a whole board state with it, which is nice. Rubble Reading, no. Uh, Gavelhide Goblin, good for Grawl. Burn Bright, not really what we're looking for. Storm Strike is fine as well. So we only have one Goblin Gathering. So our red is, like, kind of mediocre as well. Um... But we do have the, the Hellkite, which is really good. Like, I mean, that's a nice Riot creature. We're definitely not playing Rakdos, because I actually don't like these guys. They're, like, okay. They're not great. They're a 3-2 for 3. <laughs> that deals a damage when they, you know, when when this attacks and becomes blocked, they take a damage. So it's a guaranteed one damage, which at least turns on your, like, Spectacle cards. But at the same time, like, then you're probably losing this 3-2, and you're only getting one turn of Spectacle out of it, um, which is not amazing. The Cult Guild Mage is fine, it's not amazing, and the Rafter Demon, I don't like. I think it's way too, like, it's a 4-2 for 4, which is fine, I guess, but there's a 4-2 for for 3 in green, so it only costs, one, only costs one color, and it's the same power. But, if you want to spectacle this out for one more mana, you can make your opponent discard a card. Which doesn't seem great. Um... I mean, I'm sure that there have been situations where this has actually done work and made your opponent discard your last card or their last card that they were holding on to, and it's like turn five, turn six, and that's great. But, like, the amount of times that that happens is probably not very likely. So I don't think we're playing red, black, and I don't think we're playing green, red, um, which means let's take a look here. We have a guild gate. Uh, we, we can technically, if we're going to end up playing, like, Esper, we could we could splash things with a Rakdos Guildgate. We have two Azorius Guildgates and an Orzhov Guildgate. Simic we're definitely not playing, because we only have... We have two Simic cards, and one is Biomancer's Familiar, and one is Aeromunculus. And that being said, like, we only had one Adapt Creature in green. All right? We only had one Adapt Creature in green, and in blue, what do we have? Let's take a look. We've got Courier, Commando, Humungulus, Clear the Mind, Arresters, Windstorm Drake, Arresters, Quench, Persistent Petitioners, Chillbringer, Humungulus. We have one, two. We have two Adapt Creatures. So, I mean, that would put us to one, two, three, four. We would put us to four Adapt Creatures with Biomancer's Familiar, which is, which is not great. It's not great. 
Um, Biomancer from you really want to play it in a deck with a with a bunch of adapt creatures because the whole point of his ability is it makes their adapt cost less, and then you can also adapt them as if they didn't have one one counter, so they can just get bigger and bigger, which is great. Except that you need adapt creatures, so we're definitely not playing green blue. Like it's just not happening. So we're gonna put this rare off to the side, and we're gonna put this air monculus off to the side, and we're gonna put these guild gates off to the side because we're not playing blue green. And we're not playing green red. <coughs> Excuse me. My goodness. All right. So, that being said, let's take a look at what we have. We've got a Deputy of Detentions, which is very good. We have a Skargon Hellgite, which is like crazy. This is like a bomb. This is a bomb. It's absolutely a bomb. It's a five. It's a four four for five that you can put a one one counter on it when it comes in, so it becomes a five five for five. If it has a 1-1 counter on it, you can pay 4 mana and do 2 damage, divided as you choose among any number of creatures. Or 1 or 2 targets. You can even do it to their face. You can just burn them for 2 every turn for 4 mana, which is pretty crazy. Now, if we're playing black, Bedeck is fine. You can play Bedeck in a, bl in a black deck, no problem. Um, the Bedazzle is not, like, super amazing. It's not super amazing. But we also have this Godless Shrine, which helps us fix, which is kind of cool. And then we have this Tesa. Now, Tesa is really only useful if we have creatures that matter when they die. And right now, we have this guy. And if we look in here, we've got... Ilgotten Inheritance is good. Vampire is good. So, Tesa triggers Vindictive Vampire, which is nice. Alright, so, like, our black is not actually bad. Like, our black is actually pretty decent. Like, even though we don't have a lot of it, the cards that are here are all playable, right? This card's a little bit finicky because it makes them sack, and if they have additional things, it doesn't work out very well. And Debtor's Pulpit, or Debtor's Tramp Transport, I should say, is very, like, end-of-the-road playable. Like, you only put this in if you need a playable, really. Like, I, I, I probably wouldn't play it unless I was, like, like heavy-duty into Afterlife. Right now, that being said, Tesa makes Debtor's Pulpit or D Debtor's Transport. Jeez, why do I? Uh, it makes this make four one ones as opposed to only two, which is much better, absolutely. But you have to have both in play. Now, Ill-gotten Gains is this card is just playable in any deck that you can splash it. Um, it's very, very good. Um, that being said, like I don't think, I don't think we're gonna splash black for too much if we don't have to, but we'll see. Because I don't think our white was also very heavy on Afterlife, right? Like, from what I recall seeing. Yeah, we have no we have no Afterlife in white and no Afterlife in black. So, like, Tesa doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot. Now, it does make our tokens have Lifelink and uh, Vigilance, which is cool. But how many tokens are we making, right? Like, this card is not good unless you're in the High Alert deck, in my opinion. Uh, bring to Trial is fine. It's not amazing. It's fine. Uh, summary Judgment is very good. So two Summary Judgments for sure we'll play. Uh, Tenth District got, uh, Veteran is, like, mediocre. It's fine. It's not amazing. Um, it's it's fine, I guess. For Two Forbidding Spirits is actually not terrible. It'll put our opponent off attacking us as much. Um, so that's not too bad. Uh, Impassioned Orator is fine in, it, it's actually really good in, like, the Orzhov deck with tokens if you have a lot of afterlife, but, like, in this type of deck that we're looking at building right now, it's not super amazing. Now, it is attrition, though, so, I mean, there is that. Um, the Civic Stalwart is fine, and the Officer is fine as well, I think, in, I don't think we want the Prowling Caracal, personally, but who knows. Now, that being said, we do have some sweet, like, we can splash Imperious, uh, Oligarch and Grasping Thrall, for sure. I mean, Tesa doesn't do a whole heck of a lot for us, but she is a 2-4 for 4. And and you could spook your opponent into thinking you have more things. So, I mean, like, Skitter Eels is good. Terramander is good. Senate Courier is good. Uh, Coral Commando is kind of mediocre. Like, we really needed a high alert for this deck. This deck would have been sweet with a high alert, for sure. Um, Arrestor's Admo Admonition. Uh, Windstorm Drake, yeah. Quench, no. Chillbringer, yes. Gateway Sneak is fine. Shimmer is fine. Okay, so... That looks like our blue, probably. I don't think we're going to be playing any of this stuff. To be honest. I don't think we're playing any of this stuff. So, I think that's that. And then, let's see. Because we, we definitely have two Law Mages, Bindings, and two Depose and Deploy. Both amazingly playable in Orzov. 
or in Azorius, I should say. So like we're definitely in Azorius. We're gonna splash some black probably, um, because it's easy for us to do so. Unfortunately, we're not. We're probably not gonna be playing the Skargan Hellkite, um, which is too bad because it's our biggest bomb. I would think. I think it's our biggest bomb out of the entire set. The problem is, is our red is just too weak to support it, and our green isn't any better. And the black definitely can't support... Like, we definitely don't have enough Rakdos to support uh, the red in on that side as well. So, I mean, the red would have to be a splash, and we don't have enough gates to splash it with what the other colors are that we're playing, right? Because we're definitely not playing green. Like, our green is definitely not strong enough to play anything. So, like, that goes off to the side. We got Azorius Locket, we've got Gate Colossus, Azorius Locket, Sphinx. We have a Rakdos Locket, so I mean, there, we do have two red fixing, technically, because we have a Rakdos Guildgate, and we have a Locket. <laughs> that being said, two red is definitely not not enough to, to splash Skargan Hellkite into this type of deck. Um, and unless we want to get super greedy, which I don't think we do, I don't think we go that route. I think red is out. I think red is out. Which means Skargan Hellkite, unfortunately, is also out. Right, so that puts us there. We've got Godless Shrine. We're going to run one, two, three, four gates. We're going to run the Rakdos gate just because it's an extra gate for gate glasses. Excuse me. See, this catch in my throat is still kicking around. It's, it's really bothering me, unfortunately. But what can you do? So, that being said, um, we're definitely playing the Ill-Gotten Inheritance. I think we play the Imp. And I don't know if we play any of this other black, to be honest. Um, maybe you play, like, the under one Undercity Scavenger just to, like, help with it, help with your draws. But I think I think we put the rest of the black off to the side for the moment and just see what our what our curve looks like with this. So this is our blue that we're not really playing. This is this, this is this, this is this. Let us see what we've got going on here. So we've got... Put that there for the moment. We have a lot of three drops. And not a whole heck of a lot of two drops. Holy moly. Alright. So the bring the trial I think only comes in if we play like because we're gonna do it's best of three. So the bring the trial only comes in if we're playing up against like a Grawl or a Simic deck. Alright, so let's talk about what we're cutting out of here. So I think we're cutting I wanna say we're cutting the Undercity Scavenger. But we can leave Tesa and Imp. Let's see what we're cutting out of here. Like, let's put in the best things. That's fine. That's fine. Gateway Sneak is like... I feel like it's okay. It's just not amazing. I mean, the Vampire might, <laughs> might be the cut. And I think we want to play both Forbidding Spirits. And then maybe we cut these two. Right? And then in our two drops... We'll keep this guy, and we'll keep that, I guess. I mean, that's a greedy. The Imperious Oligarch is very greedy with our splash. But I think it's better than, like, the Prowling Caracal. And, I mean, we have two We have two Summering Judgments and a Quench for early control. So, like, we can get to our late game pretty quickly, which is nice. Or not quickly, but, like, we can get there pretty uh, undamaged, hopefully. Um, I think we're going to play, like, one Azorius Locket. And I don't think we're going to play the others. I don't think we're going to play these two. Because we have one, two, three black sources. Uh, maybe we play the Orzov locket instead of the Azorius locket. That's possible. Just as another black source. 
because we can still crack it with our with our white mana, which is nice. Ill-gotten gains for sure. Ill-gotten inheritance for sure stays in. Maybe the civic stalwarts out in the four drop range. Um, okay, let's see. We've got what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So we got to cut five cards. Okay, well, Sphinx comes out. I'd rather have the Colossus over the Sphinx. Maybe the, I think the Gateway Sneak comes out. I think it's too cute. And I mean, like, maybe we cut the Tesa, just because she doesn't do a whole heck of a lot in our deck. Like, we've got a pretty nice, like, blue-white, uh, black flyers kind of build here, which is nice, right? Because, like, these are flyers. This is a flyer. This makes a flyer. This is 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 a flyer. These two make flyers. Yeah, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. So what was that? We've got now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So we've got to cut two more cards. It's possible that we cut like one Arrestor's Admonition. Because I think the Law Mage's Bindings are better than three drops. And then maybe we cut like the Shimmer. The Shimmer is very good for us to get to where we're going. But it's possible that we just cut it. All right, and that was, what, two cards we cut? So we need to cut one more. Or no, we were at 25, right? So we're, we're good now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. There you go. 17 lands. Now, the thing is, is like you could bring in the Shimmer and, and just look at playing 16 lands. Um, I've been toying around with a lot of, like, 16, 17 land decks um, in this format in Arena. Um... I find that when I run 17 lands, I end up just, like, wishing that I had another playable as opposed to another land, because a lot of the games go, they either go really long, or they don't go very long because one of you gets, like, either flooded or screwed, right? Like, that's what I find, anyway. Um, the deck, the, the, the games tend to go, like, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and um, by that point, you're, like, on turn, like, you know, 13, maybe? right and you're like okay turn 13 do you want to have 17 lands in your deck or do you want to have 16 lands in your deck i think you'd rather have 16 lands in your deck at that point so i mean it's possible that we just add back in like the arrestors admonition right just as another way to like stall the board state and get to the late game I think I think this is not terrible. It's not it's not by far the best deck that that it could have been. Um, if we had some like we would have liked maybe like a high alert. A high alert would have made this deck quite quite good because um, we have a lot of things that have like butts. We have a lot of things that have butts. Um, now it would have turned off our windstorm Drake. It would have turned off all our top end. Like high alert would turn off all our top end. Uh, but if we had the high alert, we would run the 3-6-6 six, six drop in white, right? And we might have run some of the other things that we had kicking around in black and blue, right? So, maybe high alert's not really what you want for this deck. It might have been better just to have, like, you know, one of the Azorius Knights in the 5 drop, the 2-5 unblockable Vigilance. Um, or maybe just another flyer. Like, even just... um. The spirit, the the four drop white spirit that gives all your flyers plus zero plus one, or like the uh, the Azorius uh, flyer, uncommon flyer that gives your opponent's creatures all minus one, minus zero, like those things would have been good to have probably. And I think our fixing is perfectly fine. Like we have a Godless Shrine for our white black, and we have an Orzov Guildgate, and then we have two Azorius Guildgates, and we have a Rakdos Guildgate just for like our Gate Colossus specifically. And then we could splash we could splash a red or two if we wanted to, 
Um, I don't think we want to. Um, and it's possible that we switch the Orzov locket out for an Azorius locket um, if we find that we're not able to crack this ever. But I think having this in as a third black source makes it better than running another black mana, to be honest. Because I think we would rather draw a locket and play it for three to have another black source than run a black source like a basic. Um, now that being said, we have what? One, two, three, four. Yeah, we have we have four black cards. So three black sources, two of them being lands, one of them being... Or I guess you should say, we have three black sources in lands and one in a locket. I think that's plenty. I think that's plenty to run those. And we wouldn't have to run any basic swamps, which is nice. Um, the only thing that that throws you off is playing Oligarch on turn two if you don't draw one of your black uh, one of your black lands, right? Because um, all the black lands... You have to draw it on turn one, opening hand, right? Because, well, not the Godless Shrine, technically, but the Orzov Guildgate and the Rakdos Guildgate, if you don't draw them... In your opening hand, you're not playing Oligarch on turn two. But that's okay. I don't think we want to play Oligarch on turn two. I don't think that's the plan for this deck. So. There you go. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I've been your host, Bitter Bevers. This has been a little uh, opening and uh, build of an Azorius uh, pre-release kit. Thank you so much for watching. I have been your host, Mr. Bevers. And as always, may your pulls ever be better. Thank you.